Talk Show. Recorded live. Frank, you there? Hi, Brian. It's Frank. How are you going? Hi. Great. Uh, pretty good. Uh, we got about a minute to go. Do you want to wait or just start now? Oh, we'll start the recording and, and then we can uh, we can ease in. Let's do that. Yeah, I'm going to have to go in and edit later because uh, going in, there was a glitch. It started right away. So uh, uh, welcome, everybody, for uh, to the call tonight, to the open uh, call uh, of the Eucadia University. Uh, I'm Brian T. Collins, and I'm here with uh, your host, Frank O'Collins. And uh, there's a lot of ground to cover tonight. So, uh, Frank, why don't you take it away? Yeah, thanks, uh, Brian. Uh, welcome, everybody, uh, to the regular uh, Wednesday night uh, Eucadia call. Uh, for those that are listening, yes, there is a lot to get through tonight. There have been quite a few updates on the section on one-heaven.org on ecclesiastical deeds. And I'm looking forward to going through a number of those with you, explaining why we've updated them. And then, of course, I look forward to answering your questions. Uh, for those that uh, will be listening to this later, or anyone who's listening now who wants to listen to the call later, of course, you can go to TalkShoe and get the latest broadcast, or you can go to the University of Eucadia website, which is uh, http university.eucadia.info, and you should be able to find this latest recording. So thanks again for all who are on the call now and those who will be listening later. So the topics tonight, uh, given the updates that have uh, taken place on the design of the ecclesiastical deeds, this is going to be the main uh, subject of our discussion tonight and should take most of the uh, call. However, given there are nine months to go before I have to step down and make sure that everything that has been created in Eucadia has been conveyed to the communities. I just want to quickly mention the focus that is coming up very much in the next week on the launching of how to save and help your community. And you'll be hearing from next week and a bit tonight, but certainly a bit tonight and then next week and each week uh, thereafter, a growing emphasis on the absolute importance of building these communities. And you'll hear tonight when I talk about the kind of remedies and the kind of research that led us to make the changes to EDP. It's because of the importance of building the community. It's because of the importance of no longer being islands and being able to be picked off one by one by a group that refuses to learn and remains very much uh, self-satisfied that their world will continue. So well, let's get straight into um, EDP updates. And for those that are on the call and listening, I am referring to the updates on one-heaven.org on the home page. When you go to the home page, you'll find that uh, if you click on the Ecclesiastical Deed Poll box, that is where I'm going. So I want to start with a, a, a couple of important things. <clears throat> one is one definition of insanity that uh, is uh, popular is the idea of doing the same wrong thing over and over again. The intention behind the ecclesiastical deeds has not changed. I'll repeat that because it's important. The intention behind the ecclesiastical deeds has not changed. From the first time that we issued and showed and discussed ecclesiastical deeds, the intention is, was, and still is, that you are not a slave. You are competent. No one owns you. No one has the right to claim you. And certainly this is not what Eucadia or One Heaven or any part of what we're doing is doing. And certainly no system that you were born into has any right whatsoever to claim your name, to claim your flesh, and certainly no right to claim your soul. All that's happened is that as all of you, and those that uh, will be listening later, but as we have received feedback from you, as to the overwhelming ignorance that exists at a district, local, council, 
and even state and province level, it has become clear that to still promote that there is any kind of remedy possible at a local district or state level would be fruitless and would be disingenuous. Now I said there are a number of couple of, a couple of points and then and this is the second point, third point. The purpose of issuing the ecclesiastical deeds, the purpose of doing the paperwork and procedure is not first to have a magic bullet, but to perfect your claim of right and to perfect the dishonour of the existing system. Now, as many of you have seen in the last week, two weeks, regimes that have been in power for more than 30 years can fall in days. Can fall in days. And if you had asked anyone two weeks ago, well, let's say three weeks ago, was there a chance that Mubarak would be thrown from power in Egypt most would laugh at you and say there is a man that has ruled with such an iron fist that no one has a chance of such a feat. Now <clears throat> the same would be with Gaddafi. People would say you know what's the chance of Gaddafi and his corrupt family from being thrown from power in Libya and people would laugh at you. Albeit Gaddafi being the kind of psychopath he is has already laid out that he will torch and destroy Libya before he will see anyone um, take it from him or his sons. Well, <clears throat> he will lose and is losing and will soon be moved from power. So the change in a regime can happen in days. And the problem has never been in the change of regimes but in the restoration of law. Because when you look at history, one of the scary facts is that rarely has effort been made into perfecting and restoring law other than the pursuit of power. What good would it be if we were to succeed in seeing these people thrown from their offices because of their dishonour, only to be confronted with a replacement of people with even less ignorance and, in, and, and even less integrity than the present. Now, there are people who live for revolution. There are people who push for revolution. And sadly, the people who push for it and want it, driven by emotions such as anger and rage, however justified, find that when they finally reach that point, the first thing on their mind is not to restore the law, but revenge. Well, revenge and blood and fire and hatred does not heal the remaining problem. And as much as we get frustrated by the police in our various societies that we live in, think about this. What if the police absolutely weren't there? Then some states of America where they're planning to cut the final financial budgets, that ultimately might be a reality. And that's a scary thought. As the breakup of Yugoslavia showed, when there is a complete absence of law and order, societies, very well-educated societies, can quickly fall apart into the kind of Armageddon horrific movies that we see sometimes produced from Hollywood. So the primary goal of what we're doing, the intent that has never changed, is to perfect our claim of right and to perfect their dishonour and most importantly, to continue to become competent in the law to finish the restoration of the law, to finish the canons, the 22 books of canon law, to finish the covenants and the charters so that they are in place and so that the conveyance of property transposes from the covenant of one heaven down to the globe union, 
down to the Americans Unions and the African Union and the Asia Union, down to the various national free societies, to the states, and then down to the local communities. And all of this has to happen in the next nine months. And all of this has to be in place in the next nine months, including supporting of local currencies and supporting of uh, marketing and exchange in local currencies and roles and education and support through a UK to IT community. And all of this has to be in place. So I know it's frustrating, more than frustrating. I know, I know it's frightening when confronted with the personal issues of people threatening to put you in jail or take your home or take your car or take your children. And that these things, because of their very nature, are front and, and centre for our concern and why we are interested, not just interested, why we are seeking remedy and why we're willing to seek remedy from whomever sounds credible sometimes in presenting that remedy. I understand that fear. I understand that fear. So the changes we've done have come because we're not going to stand around and see uh, and be witness to the level of ignorance anymore at a local level. I believe we have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is absolutely no remedy to be found at a local community, regional or certainly a state level in their system. And so now the EDP process moves to a national level. Now let's go through then some of these changes and some of the information that sparked the um, enhancements and the importance of it and hopefully how this will help you in what you're doing. So first off, I, I said the intentions uh, not changed, but before I'd be remiss if I, I didn't cover this point. If you have undertaken an ecclesiastical deed process, including the issuing of bills, or UCC or any of the above, you have not done anything wrong. Nor does the changes in any way depreciate what you've done. Now, I'll repeat that so that we're absolutely clear. If you have done the ecclesiastical deed process, that was the old process, then you have not made any mistake. Nor has anything you've done now become irrelevant or wrong. This process is merely an evolution. You are not required to repeat the process. You're not required to repeat the process. If you choose to repeat the process at a national level, that is entirely up to you, but it does not diminish what you have done at all. So please, I don't want anyone to feel that they have spent weeks and in some cases months perfecting this only to feel that what they've done is all for naught. It is not for naught. As I said, if you have done an ecclesiastical deed poll, it is a perfected claim of right. The intent has not changed. Now, that in mind, let's go through some of the key insights that brought us to this point. I'm going to start with a new one that we haven't gone through before and it's an odd sounding word and it is the topic of indulgences and negotiable instruments. Now the article I'm talking about is on one-heaven.org. When you click on Ecclesiastical Deed Poll, you'll see a, a, a link there both in the uh, con contents and down the side. On the side it says Negot Instruments. And on the introduction, it's the third link down, and it should show you indulgences and negotiable instruments. So please click on that, and let's go through this article. <coughs> if you say to someone, what, what's your idea of an indulgence? And I don't mean indulgence like spending at home with a big tub of ice cream and watching your favorite movie. I mean indulgences as, as in terms of religious indulgences. Well, m most people today would have never heard of them. So if you are educated and you're under the age of 35, in many cases people would say, I don't know what you're talking about because they just don't talk about it anymore. If you're older than that or you've gone, uh, had a higher education, then you, you may have some vague recollection or, or your church may have told you about this. So some might say, well, when I think of it,